Hi, so these things, I have quite a lot of these actually, and people, including me, use them a lot for generation, particularly wind generation. Unfortunately, their output is uh, pretty disappointing, and there's a reason for that. Let's have a look inside. The reason these are disappointing as generators actually is right there and right there, because the strength of any EMF in a generator is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field, the length of the wire that passes through that field, and the speed at which it passes through that field. Now, a coil is just a, a long bit scrunched up, so there's not much length there, actually, for a generator. These, although they're pretty good for what they do, aren't the most powerful of magnets, they're just ceramic magnets. And of course the speed at which this turns is proportional to the wind speed passing over it and the ability of these blades to capture that wind speed and turn it into rotation. But that's why. So if you want to do something about improving the output of these, then we've got to alter one of those factors. We've got to make it spin faster, give it a stronger magnetic field, or get a, a longer length of wire. Now obviously we're going to use this magnet because it comes as is and it's all balanced and set up and everything, so nothing we can do about magnetic field. The rate of spin is going to be proportional to the wind speed that we plan on sticking it in, so about the only thing we can do is increase the length of wire here, so we can rewind that with longer wire. Now it's pretty traditional to take these boards off, solder to the ends of the coils, and you have yourself a generator. We're going to do exactly that, remove the board, and then remove the wires, and then rewind it. Okay, so I've taken the wire off and I've got the bare poles. Now they were wired, or rather coiled, pole to pole, obviously, so the opposite poles are wired. They use six metres of wire, so it's three metres each pole, 62 turns, and this is uh, 24 SWG. Now that's pretty thick wire and not a lot of it for something like that. But then it's not a surprise, it was a uh, servo motor, so it's meant to take quite a lot of power and it's using thick wire so it can carry the amps, so it can bang quite a lot of amps in there and get that to spin. But that's great for a motor, but not so good for a generator, because remember, the um, magnetic field, length of the wire, speed of the turn determines the voltage, the current is going to be determined by the load that you apply on it, and the amount of torque you need to put on it is going to be related to the load that you put on and the reactants that the load has based on the generation and based on what it's tied onto. So what we really would love is a lot of thin wire in there so we get a greater length of wire. Now obviously there's an interplay because that will limit the current because if we put thin wire on there, it's got quite a high resistance and that means if we try to draw too much current for it or if we try to put it onto a, a load that wants too much current, we're gonna to have to put a lot of force in there to turn it and that amp could exceed the wire. So that's the relationship between the wires actually. But we we can bang a bit of thin wire on there and we should get a much higher voltage out of this. Anyway, let's rewind it. So I basically rewound it with some 30 gauge wire which is about 0.25 of a mil. That's replacing this which was about 0.5 of a mil, more or less. And I put on uh, 240 turns instead of the 60 turns that were on there, so basically about four times the length. Now we can bang it back together and see if it's made a difference. Okay, so what I've got here is an identical PC fan where the only modification I've done is to make it into a generator. Just removed the circuit board and soldered the wires onto the ends of the coils. Now if we set that one up, so I've got a voltmeter here and I've got a little LED as a load. So we can get about 1.4 volts out of that and we can't light our LED. Now let's try our modified one. And we get 2.6 volts out of that easily and the LED lights brightly. So the moral of this story really is if you want to improve the output of a PC fan as a generator then you have to do one of those three things. Either improve the magnetic field, increase the speed at which it turns, or increase the length of wire that's passing through the magnetic field. 
Now we could have used a thinner wire and got even more turns in there, in which case we've got a much, much higher voltage. This incidentally is why those um, turntable generators, where people have been taking turntable motors from microwaves, attaching a handle, it's why they generate such high voltages, because that, hair, that uh, wire in there is basically hair and is a couple of thousand turns. We only did that because that's the wire I had and it's easier to handle at that kind of SWG. So doing any of those three things is going to actually improve generation in any generator. But remember there are trade-offs. Because although the voltage goes up, if you're supplying a load and that load has quite a high amp draw, then of course you're going to risk burning out your wires. So you always have a trade-off with these things. But to improve the PC fan as a generator, in fact anything as a generator, you need to be looking at improving one of those three things. Anyway, I hope it was of interest. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.